Hey guys, Justin here from Aqua Electric. We're standing in front of the Electric Hybrid Marine Expo here in Amsterdam, and I'm so excited because this is where Europe's largest manufacturers are showcasing all of the new electric propulsion technology. Let's go check out what they have to offer. Okay guys, we got our IT badge. Here we go. Hey, so we're standing in front of Evoy, which is a Norwegian manufacturer of electric outboards and propulsion. We're gonna go talk to Trond, the marketing manager, and ask him a few questions about what they have going on. Yes, my name is Trond Strömgren. I work as a sales manager, Nordic, for Evoy. You took a journey on the X9, uh, this vessel right here. Yeah. Can you tell us uh, where did you go and, and how was the journey and uh, how did it perform? Ah, cool journey. Me and my boss partly we went from Florida up the Norwegian coast to Stavanger, 260 nautical miles. And then in April last year, through snow and ice and sun and flat water and heavy waves and it's a cool trip. How did the boat perform? I performed super, super, because this is a you know boat made for speed, also it hands rough seas. And also if you are out of the sea. The propeller will not, be, uh, will not uh, speed up. So you're saying if you launch off of a wave and the prop comes out of the water, it won't overspin? Yes, yes. Because yeah. it's electronic. Yeah, incredible. yeah. So that's, a, that's a good thing with the... I'm sure that never stuff. happened. Right? Happened on this trip. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, right on. Yeah. This is a goldfish X9. It's 9.7 meter. And uh, it's made for speed with just two steps in the hull. And uh, the motor we have installed is 400 uh, horsepower electric motor with the peak value 800 horsepower. This is our breeze model. The onboard 120 horsepower plus, and plus means that this can operate at 120 continuous. Mm -hmm. And then if you give full throttle, it can uh, give you 185 horsepower to plane the uh, boat. Wow, okay. And this comes normally with one battery, uh, 63 kilowatt battery. But if you want, you can add uh, two batteries, three batteries to extend the range if the boat can carry this extra weight. This is a commercial model. We have been selling uh, the system since 2019. So they are 100% commercial. Uh, so the, this outboard's been operating for about four years now. Yeah. Three and a half years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So the, the electric motor can operate for about. 100, is it 1,800, 2,000 hours? Is that what you No, 180,000 and 200,000 hours. Okay. That means you can 200,000 hours. Of years, actually. Amazing. Yeah. And also our fish farmers, and, and like you said, they, they give food trouble in the winter time, in the storm. So that's the best test pit for us. Is yeah. the Norwegian fish farmer operating all year round on these rough seas. So we're in front of Vita and this company manufactures electric ribs. So we're here with Nigel of Vita, and can you tell us a little bit about uh, this boat behind you? Yeah, sure. So this is our new 5.8 meter sea dock. It's an iteration of our 7.2 meter sea wing. So it's a fully electric rib. This one's specifically used for harbor use, harbor craft. You're gonna get eight to 10 hours of use out of it. This one's going to the south of France, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's Going to the south of France. There's uh, four other ones like it going to the south of France this summer. Okay. They'll be used as harbor patrol boats, um, towing, you know, looking over regattas, stuff like that. Cool. Can yeah. you uh, show us the console and yeah, sure. kind of maybe what's what's different about this than say a gas power it's, boat? Honestly, it's it looks like a normal boat, and the reason for that is we don't want to change, you know, what a boat feels like or how to operate it. So. For a lot of these operators, you want to leave it as simple as possible. So you have your normal Raymarine screens, all your dash buttons, your tank throttle, which controls the electric powertrain, and then you just have your normal C-Smart steering. And then all your systems, you can configure it with storage, Raymarine, EHF, um, multiple displays, whatever you need. With. So it's for towing. And the electric powertrain allows for you to have a lot of torque in towing. This rugged kind of interior is requested by the client. It's, it's not pretty, but it is does a certain purpose. And if it had paint on it, they said they'd chip it, so we left it off. <laughs> right on. 
so you have so on this boat you have our the batteries are underneath the floor panels and your propulsion systems are back here. Yep. So you have your 63 kilowatt hour battery under here. If you need access to it, there's bolts to unbolt it. There's also a control uh, panel that you can access in. Your CCS1 charging sockets here. So this is how you can charge it up on a DC charger. You can get a full charge in about 45 minutes. Wow. And then. Your fire powertrain, high voltage is in under here, easy access under the hood, and then stern drive, mercury stern drive on the back, which can be serviced easily. The design is to fit a purpose, and the harbor masters really like it for that exact use. Okay. This has been a big demand um, from municipalities and harbors and governments to, to get these electric, so that's what this boat's for. When was this company formed? Uh, 2017. We do only electric uh, installation, so we're a marine technology company. The boat's more of a platform to show off the powertrains and show what they can do. Okay. But uh, we do uh, powertrains with the boats, and we, then we also install into OEMs, so third-party companies that want to go electric or want to come out with an electric version, we can supply them with the powertrains. Hey guys, so we're standing in front of Sea Lance, it's, which is an Italian company that manufactures water jets that are shaped and based off of an airplane turbine. Let's check it out. So check out this jet drive. It's based off of an aircraft turbine. You see the fans and the, the fan blades inside resemble that of a jet turbine. So this whole system mounts on an outdrive for directional control. You can also do reverse thrust. So when you put the vessel in reverse, it will pull water from this direction, send it out this way. But normal operation, it's going to pull water into this direction, shoot it out the back for a much more efficient process than a regular propeller. A propeller is about 50% efficiency, whereas this jet turbine is actually 70%. Here, we have this jet that is 210 kilowatts of power, and uh, there are two electric motors inside, and the fuel dynamic are a uh, control rotating one. For, for this kind of jet, uh, we do it uh, both from 10 meters to 24, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, this is the little one, the family. And we have uh, an, uh, another jet that we will be on uh, water for testing in September. That is at 335 uh, uh, kilowatts. The, the efficiency part, uh, you will see it uh, from 20 knots either. And the, the maximum speed of this one, this little one, is uh, 55 knots. Wow, so cool. Awesome. That one is the controller. Okay. And uh, here inside we have uh, all the inverters uh, that command the jet and the batteries, the onboard charger, the DCC, and the vehicle control unit where is uh, all the strategy and uh, all the system that we made. So mm -hmm. the, our core business is uh, the software and firmware because uh, all of the system is modular one. We're in front of the Eboa booth and they are partnering with a company called Yasa behind me as well. Yasa supplies the motors, they have the axial flux motors and Eboa provides the batteries technology. They have partnered with the supplier from Formula E to get their high performance batteries supplied to these motors. So this is a Yasa axial flux motor. And I guess what's different about, or maybe you can tell me what's different about uh, axial flux versus uh, let's say a standard type of electric motor. So ultimately it's power density. So we, these motors are on a six kilowatt kilogram. Uh, we have motors that are got in the 15 kilowatt to kilogram rating. Right so hugely power dense. Very lightweight, high torque. And uh, how many kilowatts is this motor? So this double stack is 320 kilowatts. 320 kilowatts, you said about 400 horsepower? 400. Directly all the pool data. So that's, that's a very compact package for that amount of power. So I'm here at the Hybrid Marine Expo, standing in front of a diesel engine. You might be asking yourself, why is there a diesel engine at an electric expo? Well, we're going to show you why. So we're at Hurcon Marine and this is a mercury diesel engine. The reason why it's here at the expo is because of this box right here. So this is a Hurcon electric hybrid system where you actually have this extra area added to the transmission with this belt drive system that the diesel motor can actually power this electric 
Huracan power supplier right here, which charges the battery. Once you go into hybrid mode, the hybrid power actually sends power back through the motor, which spins the propellers. You have three modes. You have hybrid mode, diesel mode, and electric mode. So you can run this boat all off of this motor powering the propeller. You can power it from the diesel and you can do a hybrid system where power is coming. When you accelerate the throttle, you're starting with electric power and eventually the diesel takes over. Hercon also makes an electric propulsion system. This is a 50 kilowatt motor powered to a, a Mercury outdrive. So we're here in front of the Volvo Penta IPS booth. And if you are new to the marine industry, Volvo IPS is one of the most dominant systems. I'd say in Florida, probably, I'm making this number up, probably about 50% of the vessels we drive have a Volvo IPS system. That's uh, basically the Volvo's pods uh, controlled by their little joystick and it just gives uh, incredible efficiency. So I think it's worth paying attention to what Volvo is doing. And if we come to their little ship model here, we can kind of check out what Volvo has in store for the future of IPS. So right now they have um, their new system is going to be lining up and see diesel generators. And this is an electric motor powering the, the hydraulic electric pod system. And the future is basically going to have uh, two motors powering each drive. And again, that gives you the counter-rotating, forward-facing counter-rotating props to give that Volvo Penta efficiency. So exciting stuff. Uh, this will definitely be a company to watch. This is the, the team from Solar Boat 20, and they're uh, a solar racing team. So they're going to Monaco in two weeks uh, to enter their boat. This is the back edge, uh, or the back straight of our boat. Uh, it contains the uh, propulsion as well as the foil of the back uh, strut. With the foil we can adjust the height of the boat, with the propulsion we, we uh, provide momentum forwards. And as you can see it's a counter pro uh, rotating propeller, uh, which uh, is more efficient than uh, the usual single propeller as it counters the, the beam coming out of the first one. Okay. And uh, above here is in the boat, so here's actually the actual motor, which uh, yeah, gets the propellers uh, moving faster. How many kilowatts is the motor? Uh, it's one and a half uh, kilowatts. Okay. How much power do you get from the solar panels? Uh, 1500 watts. Okay. So these are actually, these are the, the counter rotating propellers that you have? Is yeah, these are or? more like a prop. Okay. Um, because we have new one this year, but they are on the boat, of course. But they kind of look more like the double one. Yep. And we have two of these counter rotating. Uh, however, we are also experimenting with using, for example, a triple blade four and a second blade behind it, or uh, examples like that. Okay. We, will, we will test them in these upcoming two weeks before Monaco. Uh, I guess like one you'd get more propulsion and the other you get higher top speed. Yeah, something like that. exactly. Because we participate in those races, uh, the boat will be tested on several parts. Mm -hmm. uh, this includes a sprinting race for high top speeds, but also agility like uh, slalom, as well as endurance races. So uh, in between those races, we can, uh, for example, uh, switch hydrofoils or perhaps blades mm -hmm. or uh, make uses of a nozzle in order to perform the best way possible on that specific element. Okay, so these are actually the foils and you were saying that um, that these adjust uh, on the on demand on the fly to make sure the elevation of the boat is, is correct? Indeed, yes. Okay. So uh, based on our electric control system mm -hmm. uh, and the uses of sonars, uh, the boat can measure its height towards the water with that information, it has a, a, a loop feedback on itself and it can adjust all the three hydrofoils single uh, from each other. Uh, and therefore, for example, uh, foiling stably on rougher waters yeah. uh, is supposed to be to make more easy. But okay. It still remains a large uh, challenge. Well, what's the top speed that you guys have gotten? Uh, until now, we've reached about 38 kilometers per hour. That's amazing. So it's like 18 to, to 19 knots. Uh, yeah, we are aiming to uh, reach any for higher top speed in order to uh, pre uh, perform better at, for example, the sprint race and the slalom. That's with no big battery packs, that's all derived from solar power. That's amazing. Super cool. All right, good luck, guys. Good yeah. luck at Monaco. Thanks a lot. So we're here in front of the NTS booth, 
And this company does something really cool. It manufactures modular systems for electric motors and drives. So instead of combining a battery, an ECU, a motor, this system has everything you need in this one package. Let's check it out. So you can see they have the 160 kilowatt and the 200 kilowatt version right next to each other. So this is what the system looks like. And essentially, this is a, an inboard system. And instead of a gas motor, you just drop the whole system straight in. And you can see it has, uh, this can bolt directly to a shaft or you can couple it with a transmission with a, a reduction gear. <laughs> so this is what it looks like in the inside. You can see that all you really need to do is once you bolt this into the boat, you connect shore power here, raw water here. This is an intake, goes through your strainer, cooling system, and this is your raw water discharge. And that's it. This whole thing is self-contained. So this is NTS's proprietary throttle system, which I really like because it has a lock and you can't just hit it and the boat moves forward. It has a button lock and it feels really solidly built. This is uh, looks like a solidly milled aluminum block and the action is really smooth. And I can just tell you that I would probably really enjoy driving a boat with a throttle system like this. Instead of, um, instead of using someone else's throttle and software, why use your own? Um, we were thinking that at the beginning, but um, we decided that it is, it's really important for the captain that he has uh, he has our brand products on the helm station. So one of the things I'm noticing right away is that, um, let's say in a traditional diesel and gas powered boat, you have a neutral light and then you go into yeah. what we call like clutch speed or idle speed yeah, yeah. and I, I don't feel uh, no, I'm not sure for that. it's not there okay this it's not there so you just kind of I guess the, the difference is with uh, it's sort of like the difference in throttle position for a gas powered boat I guess you would need a like a neutral but this it's you, you can kind of vary it as much or as little as you want we are thinking a lot regarding this position yeah either to have it or not and I think at the end the market will, will tell. Yeah. Either this is a good idea or not. We think that it's a good idea because you don't actually need it. On the other hand, the, the people are used to have it. So, to be honest, I don't know. And that's what I'm thinking right now. I don't know if this is it's, if I want it because it's something I'm used to, yeah. or when you just drive electric boats, it's you just got, really don't need it. So they actually have a maintenance section that tells you this is the maintenance you need to do on an electric boat. So uh, full battery charge, uh, clean seawater filter or strainer, um, checking coolant levels, check seawater circle, I guess that's the raw water uh, pumped in the system, and then checking the cables for corrosion. And, yeah. and, 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 and that's it, five items. We're here at the Hydro Impulse uh, booth and we have this electric outboard motor from Edyne. And Hydro Impulse uh, designs this propulsion system right here to maximize the efficiency. What you see here is uh, we from Hydro Impulse have developed uh, a pump design to increase the efficiency of, of the power that gets into the water. Okay. That is our mission. Gotcha. To improve the efficiency of bringing the power into the water. So this is the first product. The e Outboard output with the hydro impulse. Um, How does it option. compare to, a, let's say, a traditional propeller? Yeah, the efficiency increases in 20% more. 20% more, more efficiency. So 20% less consumption. Okay. This means 30% more range for electric propulsion. 30% more range. Yeah. Wow. If you okay. calculate it, it's 100% less consumption. Results is 30 percent more French. It's significant. Yeah, it's true, yeah. How does the how does the actual operation uh, feel like compared to a propeller? Do you, do you is it like similar amount of thrust initially or uh, much more acceleration? More acceleration. Much more. Really? So this is similar to a 30 horsepower mm -hmm. IC output. Yeah? Yes. But with the hydro impulse, you have the acceleration for us from a 60 horsepower. Almost Outboard. double. Yeah. Wow. How's no that kidding. achieved? No yeah. How's that achieved? Yeah. Just just uh, the design? It's 
one point is the design. This is the axial pump that has an efficiency of 80%. This is 20% more than a propeller. 80% yep, efficiency. That's the, 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 the type of machine. But the tricky point is yeah. you have to feed the pump with a straight flow of water. So and the, the key is to feed the pump. So that this, that's why you have yeah. these fixed streaks here yeah, exactly. to allow the water to it directionally yeah. controls the water into the pump yeah. and then it gives the very so there's kind of a difference when it comes to the cell selection cell selection is actually something that's really tricky to kind of figure out you really need to understand what your application is and what your charge and discharge profiles are going to be uh, also what are you trying to get out of the battery uh, are you looking for cycle life are you looking for um, a little bit higher power, higher energy, all of those different things really kind of come into play when it comes to battery cell selection. One of the things that we like about pouch cells is that pouch cells, uh, when you do the technology right with a pouch cell, you're actually going to get a little bit higher cycle life. When you look at what's inside a cylindrical cell, it's actually a jelly roll inside a cylindrical cell. And that means that you have your anode and your cathode. And because your anode and your cathode are on different sides of that jelly roll, there's an inherent imbalance between the anode and the cathode, and that actually can create some different issues with the chemistry and that can reduce your cycle life. So we're standing in front of the Helix booth. So these guys make radial flux motors derived from the motorsport industry. Let's check it out. So the company's called Helix. Uh, we founded in 1998 and as a different name, this inter integral powertrain. We were an internal combustion engine consultancy. However, in 2009, we moved our efforts and engineering efforts towards e-mobility. And in uh, July last year, we rebranded to Helix to be more in line with our uh, core, tech, core technology offerings, which is what you see before you today on the stand. We had an opportunity with a, a large OEM um, in the automotive sector to um, develop an electric motor, um, which would have been, which was a hybrid application. So this is the SBC 24294. Um, this is our core technology um, um, uh, electric motor. Uh, it's a three-phase um, radial flux surface permanent magnet motor capable of 400 kilowatts in uh, peak performance and 310 kilowatts in continuous performance. Um, one of the main things that sets us apart from our competitors is the um, is, is how close our, comp our our continuous performance is to our uh, peak performance, uh, and that's mainly down to some some, some very uh, intelligent cooling techniques. Uh, that go on within the motor. So for, for marine, for example, uh, continuous performance is of utmost importance and that's why we feel we're in a very good position to offer some uh, new and uh, cutting edge technology into the marine sector. The, the company was founded by the former Cosworth engineering management team uh, and as a result of that we had uh, many automotive and motorsport customers when we started in 98 and therefore when we moved to e-mobility in 2009 um, we already had some very good relationships set up within those sectors. So naturally we started to uh, look at uh, motorsport series and uh, sort of premium automotive applications that were looking to go electric. Um, we were very lucky to be um, uh, to, 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 to win um, the contract with Neo Triple Three um, to supply their Formula E cars um, since the beginning. Hey guys, so we're in front of the Mimer Soft Radio booth. And I know this channel is about electric boats, but I just found this booth extremely interesting. First of all, they do radio voice to text using AI. So if I speak right now into the radio and hold the mic, we'll see it pop up in the screen here, right behind me. So it's a pretty incredible tool, I think, for a lot of shifts and, and applications. And the other thing about it is if you see behind me, uh, this company is focused on uh, autonomous shipping. And that is going to be, if you're a skipper like me, that's going to be our sort of seat of the future. In, not on a ship, but actually in a room, sort of overseeing, uh, being on watch from a remote position. And, and the applications of that are pretty exciting because rather than having to be at sea for days or weeks or months at a time, we can possibly go home at night and hand the watch over to another qualified captain and um, that's that looks like the future, and you know we, there's still a, a place for us captains and people are, who are professionals of the sea. But uh, that's it, exciting stuff, and uh, yeah, let's check out what, let's check out some other booths. My name is Boyan Nikolovsky. We are of the Tema Company. 
here with uh, Edin on Edin uh, stand in Amsterdam. We are doing uh, electric machine in permanent magnet technology from 10 up to 1000 kilowatts and we have around uh, 400 application uh, all over the globe in uh, full electric, uh, diesel electric or parallel hybrid system. This is one of our middle range, the 500 kilowatt uh, Tema permanent magnet motor uh, designed only for uh, marine propulsion. As in, it can be applied in uh, shaft line version with azimuth thruster or uh, integrated uh, between diesel engine and the gearbox. The specific of this motor, this dict this technology is very efficient. The synchronous permanent magnet technology are very efficient. They are now 98% of efficiency and it's a special design. It's a much more robust. So it's designed for marine propulsion to be also coupled directly to the propeller shaft. So the nominal uh, speed of this motor is uh, 1,900 uh, RPM. So it can be attached directly to the propeller shaft. So you don't shaft. need a reduction. No, it, there is no need the reduction uh, or, or gearbox. So we are talking here about, for example, for these motors, about 2,652 newton meters. So this is a very powerful system. And uh, the maintenance for these motors are zero. So we give uh, 100 years of a guarantee that you don't have nothing to do with, this, with these motors. 100 year guarantee. 100 years, yes. Okay, so Eden Company is a spin-off of our mother company, which is specialized in powertrain technologies uh, for 30 years. So we decided to use that knowledge to try to build an, uh, a marine brand of outboard engines. So we're doing now outboard engines, 11 and 25 kilowatt. We're using the same technology also for the inboards. Uh, we are very performance oriented, so we are trying to do it as light and as, uh, as effective as possible. So this is a 25 kilowatt, uh, it is uh, aluminum made, we are using the actual flux uh, motors. Uh, I can probably say that all components are produced in Slovenia, as we are based in Slovenia. Uh, and this is uh, kind of, uh, it, is, it makes it possible to fastly develop something. Yeah? You can see there is, uh, there is uh, electric trim, is a standard in our option. We are using standard propeller, so the buyer has a, a big choice, a big range of propellers that they can use. Uh, and yeah, as I told you, it is uh, as light as possible uh, to, because in electricity you have to be efficient, uh, uh, otherwise you're just adding weight and adding horsepower, yeah, and it makes no sense. See, this is uh, sealed because it's IP67, it's not meant to be opened instead. I mean, uh, of course, if there is some service that is needed, uh, but like uh, it is not so in... the whole motor is IP67. Yeah. Okay, so that about wraps it up, guys. Thanks for coming along. We talked to a bunch of interesting people. We saw a lot of really cool technology showcased here. And I'm uh, really happy we went. And thanks for watching. Check out the next episode.